wanted to share just a little bit with you about mist nets used to catch uh, usually smaller birds like songbirds. And this morning we've got one set up here on our east campus. Um, the only problem with a mist net is, as the name implies, mist net. The, the net itself uh, is really hard to see. And we've got one stretched out here um, and it goes for about 12 meters, but it kind of disappears in the image here. And that's exactly what we hope to happen as a bird comes in and flies in and doesn't realize what's happening, they'll hit this net and get caught. So I just wanted to share with you a little bit about the uh, kind of components of the net. Uh, first of all, we have our, our poles here and uh, for inexpensive poles, I just use um, these are electrical conduit poles that you can get at any hardware store. Um, the mist nets you purchase from a reputable dealer of mist nets and usually you have to uh, supply your federal uh, band, uh, bird banding permit to, to buy mist nets. So they are, uh, they have little grommets here and there's actually five of these that uh, hold the mist net onto the support poles. And then we have these trammel lines that run uh, from the grommet. Let me see if I can get a little closer here so you can see it. And there is an actual um, pretty substantially thick string that runs across the full length of this to the other pole. And what this creates is a shelf. And again, let me see if I can get in here so that you can see what's going on. But there is a bag of net then between the two trammel lines here. And that bag is, is loose. And so when a bird comes in and hits that, it doesn't just stick in the net. A lot of people think the bird just hangs there in midair. But it actually hits that net and it usually comes down then and the net comes down below this trammel line and it actually gets in contact with the next net, which can make things difficult to remove this bird. Um, but it hangs there in, a, in, a, in this bag created by the, the loose net. And so essentially you've got a series of, since we've got five lines going up the pole, you have a series of four panels on this net that uh, can be used to capture birds. And you, you get most of your ground um, feeding birds and, and lower flying birds in the, it's really common to actually catch most of your birds in the bottom two panels of the net. Um, a lot less common to catch birds in the top two panels. Um, just because birds are taking off from the ground and um, are flying through and, and get caught in those. So um, setting up these nets, we've got our setup today. You can't really see it, but behind these bushes here um, is a feeder on East Campus that the agroforestry station folks just put out for their enjoyment. And so we're making use of this for training because it increases the odds that we catch a bird to train students with um, as we train them to take birds out of the net. But we're going to look for things that, for example, birds might be going from those bushes over to some of these trees behind me here. And so that would be a, a pathway that a bird might be flying. Think about birds leaving the feeder and then going out across campus, less likely to just head off into this straight open area, but more likely to head for more cover. So you're thinking about that as you put up your mist net. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this up and we've got it up and now we'll see if anything comes into it. But that's a little bit about how birds are captured in a mist net, at least the theory, we'll see if it works.